Okay, my friends, so now we're going to talk about another advanced concept on how to work with data structure the list in Python. We're going to talk about the Lambda. The thing is, in Python, there are a lot of built-in functions that we could use, but sometimes you want to create your own custom logic, and we can use Lambda to do that. So now, let's deep dive and understand this technique. The Lambda function is actually a tiny function without a name, and we also call it anonymous function. So instead of building a whole function, we have like a short way or a shortcut with one line you can define a whole function and you will see lambda is used a lot together with the other data structure functions like the map filter sorts in order to do extra complicated logic on top of your data structure like the list so how actually lambda works so once you say lambda then you are like defining a function it has an input like for example x and then you define in the function an expression and it could be anything like maybe you are doing some calculations where you say x multiplied with 2 or you are checking specific thing like for example is the letter a exist in this input in this x and any other expressions and of course at the end you will get the result of this expression so actually that's it you need only two things the input variable or variables and the expression so what can happen with the input and that's it okay so let's try this out all what you have to do is to use the keyword lambda like this and after that you define any variable name for the input so for example I need only one variable so x and afterward double point in order to define now the expression so what can happen with the x we're gonna go and multiply it with two it is very simple now the question is how to use this in order to do that you have to define at the start for example a variable like for example multiply and then you say equal to the lambda so that means actually the variable multiply is holding like a formula we don't know yet exactly what is the value so now in order to use it let's go and print and we can say multiply and now all what you have to do is to specify a value so you are treating now the multiply as like any other function like the print you define the function name the multiply and then you pass for it a value so here since we said okay we need an x that means one item i can go and have a number like two so now if you go and execute it now look at this we have four this is exactly the result of our expression so two multiply with two we have four okay so now let's take it to the next level where we have actually two inputs so we have two variables so in order to do that it is very simple we start with the first input it's going to be the x and then comma and the second input so now the rest is going to be the same we're going to have a double point and now we're going to tell python what's going to happen with the two input well we're going to say x plus y so i'm just adding the two inputs so this is our formula we're going to put the whole thing in a variable name like add and then after that we have to go and use it now we're going to use the variable name and then we're going to pass this time two values because we have two inputs. So we're gonna say one for the first value and two for the second value. So let's try this out. Now look at this, we are getting three. So one plus two, three mega easy right so now so far as you can see we are using some kind of like calculations on top of our input but now what you can do we can make like a check in order to check the input so we don't want to calculate anything we are just like analyzing and checking so our expression will not be manipulating the data it will be just checking so now for example let's say that i'm gonna go and check whether a character or a letter is part of another string so for example we can say lambda we are checking only one value so it is only one parameter so the input gonna be only one character so it's gonna be only one input we could use any variable so we don't have always to be an x so we're gonna say i double point and then the expression this time gonna be a normal check so we're gonna say i in and then let's have any like string value for example python so i'm checking whether the input is actually character in our string so that's it let's go and give it a name and then we're gonna print the variable name and now we have to pass any value like for example let's start with like an n so is n actually a member of this string value let's try this out well it is true so as you can see we are not changing the value we are just checking let's go and pick another value like for example z is z member of the python well let's check out as you can see we are getting false so an expression could be anything 
Alright, now with this you have the basic understanding on how Lambda works. So for example, if you look at the map function, we said you need two things. The first one is how to transform your data, the function, and the second thing gonna be your data, like the list. So now we said we could use some built-in functions and method from Python, like the upper, lower, or is alpha and those stuff. But if you say, you know what, I need to do something specific, so some extra complex logic, we cannot go and use the built-in stuff, we could go and use the help of the lambda in order to specify what we want to do. So with the lambda, we're gonna define exactly how we're gonna transform our data structure, our list. Okay, so now let's practice. I'm gonna show you an example that I had in my project. So I had a list of prices, but the issue is that the prices were in string values. And as well, each price has a dollar sign at the start. So we have 12.50, maybe another price like, as well with the dollar sign, 9.99. And the last one, as well with a dollar sign, 100.0. Now, the thing is, with those values, you cannot do a lot of aggregations and calculations like the average, min, max. You have to convert it from a string to a float. So that means I have to transform my list from a list of strings to a list of floats. But the challenge of that, you cannot go immediately from a string to a float because of those string values. So that means first, you have to do some manipulations to remove it and then change the data type to a float. Now I'm going to show you how I usually do it. I don't jump immediately and start writing lambda and stuff. I try to build the transformation like with one value and if it works then I go to the lambda. So for example I'm going to say let's have a variable called p and I'm going to give it the first value 1250. So now I'm going to start like playing with this value. So the first thing is that I'm going to go and get rid of the dollar sign. So how to remove a dollar sign from a string value? Think about it. Which string methods we have to use? Well we can go and use their place and what we're gonna do we're gonna replace the dollar sign with actually nothing an empty string so let's go and try this out perfect now i don't have the dollar sign but still my value is actually a string value the next step of that transformation i'm gonna go and change the data type so it's gonna be very simple floats and then the result of their place gonna be the input for the float and with that we will be changing the data type so look at this we have 12.5 and of course if you want to be very sure we can go and check the type so as you can see now we have a float and this is exactly what i need in order to do some aggregations so i have actually the formula and now i have to put it in lambda now the input gonna be only one price so for example p double point now what we're gonna do with the prices is actually this whole transformation i'm just go and copy and paste over here so now i know the input i know what can happen with my input now the next step is to go and apply the whole thing in our list so in order to do the transformations we're going to use the map function and then we're going to pass for it our list it is the prices let me just get rid of this and of course the output of this is going to be an iterator that's why you have to go and change the data type to a list in order to see the values and the last thing of course i would like to see the output so let's try this out now look at this i have a list of floats and this is exactly was my data transformation that i wanted to do i changed some weird string values to a float so again step by step always think about how to do the transformation then put it in a lambda and then use a map function in order to apply the whole thing to your data it is not that hard right just do it step by step like this and you can do amazing custom transformations on top of your data structures now the same thing for the filtering we need two things the rule on how to filter the data and the data itself now about the rule the function we could use the built-in methods and functions but if you want some custom specific filters we're gonna use the help of the lambda again so that means with the help of the lambda we're gonna specify exactly how to filter our data in the list okay so let's try this out we're gonna have a simple example where we have a list of prices let's say i have 120 30 maybe 300 and 80. Now my goal is I just want to see the high prices in my list so everything equal or higher than 100 should stay in the list all other prices that is lower than that I don't want to see it in the list so that means we have to build a filter and for that we need some custom logic. Now the first step is to think about how you're gonna write the condition the logic for the filter and it's gonna be very simple the price is gonna be higher or equal to 100. So this is the logic now in order to use it for this data structure we have to go and use the help of the lambda. So 
we're gonna say lambda and we're gonna pass for it of course one price now the question is what we're gonna do with this price well actually we're gonna check whether it is equal or higher than 100 okay so we have the logic the next step is that we're gonna use the filter function so we're gonna say filter and this is the filter logic and we have to pass for it our data so what should be filtered it's gonna be the list of prices now of course to see the results we have to change the data type and i would like to print the results so let's see what can happen look at this we have a list with only high prices everything that is higher or equal to 100 so very easy right we use the lambda in order to define the custom filter logic then we go and use it in the filter function together with our data so it is easy this time we're gonna go and use a nested list so we're gonna have a list of students with their scores so let's say in the first list we have the name and as well the score and let's have another student let's say Kumar and we have 90 and the last one Max and we have 60 so three students with three scores so now let's say that I would like to have a list where the students has a score higher than 70 so anything below that should not be part of my list now of course this is very specific you don't have a function for that or a method you have to build your own custom filter let's see how we can do that so the first thing is that we have to go and select exactly what we are checking right so it's gonna be the students and let's go for the row number zero for example now what we want to check is actually the scores right so it is the index number one so now this score should be higher than 70 right now we can go and test it of course so we're gonna say print and then execute it you can see it is true so the first student is actually matching our rule let's go for the second student it is true the third student so with that actually we have our filter rule now the next step we're gonna go and put it in a lambda now let's do that we're gonna say lambda now here it is interesting what is the input for this function it's gonna be the whole row so it's gonna be a row so i'm gonna send maria and as well the value and now what we're gonna check in this row is actually the index number one right it is the second value so we're gonna say row and one again i'm sending to the function the row and i'm checking the second value of the row if it is higher than 70 then everything is okay so this is always how we're gonna do it in the nested lists you send the row to lambda and then you tell python what to do with this row now the next step is that we're gonna put everything in a filter since we are building a filter so filter this is our rule and then of course we're gonna send it our data so the students and now of course in order to see the results we have to convert the object to a list and as well of course to print so now let's try this out now look at this at the output we have maria with a score 85 and kumar with a 90 but we don't have have max with 60 so actually our filtering is working so as you can see with that we have built a custom lodging using the lambda and we used it together with the filter in order to filter our nested list okay so now another challenge maybe to you if you want to pause the video now i would like to keep only the students where the first character of their names start with m so that means by looking to the data i expect you to have only two students in the output maria and max because both of them starts with m so pause the video otherwise i'm going to show you how it works now again i start just with the logic so let's get an a students like for example the second one now what we are interesting is with the first information with the first name so it's gonna be the index zero and now in order to check the first character of any string we're gonna use the method starts with and then we're gonna tell python what we are looking for so we are checking whether the value start with m and actually that's it so let's go and print it out and execute so as you can see for max it is working let's go for kumar and try this out we are getting false so actually my logic is ready and i'm gonna put it in lambda so lambda as usual we're gonna pass the whole row double points and then we have to specify which value in the row well it's gonna be the first value the first name so the index number zero and then we're gonna say starts with M. so i have the whole logic the next step i'm gonna go and put it in a filter in order to filter my data students and same thing list and the last one prints now i'm just gonna go and comment this out 
So let's try this. Look at this. We have now the students where their first name begins with M. So as you can see, it is not that hard, right? Do it step by step. The first one is to define the filter logic using Lambda. And after that, go use the function filter together with your data in order to filter your list. And that's it. Now, another application for the Lambda, we have the method sort in order to sort your list. So if you use the default, you're going to sort it from the lowest to the highest. Or if you say, you know what, let's sort it from the highest to the lowest using the reverse equal to true. But now how about to define our custom way on how to order our list? And again, we could use the help of the Lambda in order to exactly explain for Python how to sort the list. All right, my friends, so that's all about the Lambda. It is an amazing technique in order to create your custom logic in very short and easy way. And it's gonna be great assistance to use it together with other functions and methods like the map, filter, and the method sort. So this opens the door for many flexibility in order to define your logic. So if you liked this video and you would like to have more free content like this, then support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting. This really can help the channel to grow and to reach others like you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.